What's going on? So in this video, what I'm going to be covering is how to connect your Calendly custom fields with your Airtable CRM or anything, any CRM that connects with Zapier, essentially. So if you haven't met me before, what I do is I set up business systems just like this, either a CRM or a customer management system in Airtable or similar tools. And if you're interested, you can go check out the link in the description and even request a time to talk with me or someone on my team. So without further ado, we're going to jump right in. This is Calendly right here. So these are a few different events. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to book a call and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you what to do in Zapier. And then the last thing that I'm going to go do is show you just a few di different tricks on how to make this as dynamic as possible and a few words of warning at the end if you are connecting this with Zapier or any automation tool. Uh, so let's jump right into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do I have one event that is the public facing event. So if you go down in the description and request a time to talk with me or someone on my team, this is going to be the event you'll see. And so just so, and I'm going to get to this in a second as well, but so that this is the event that shows up in our test data, I'm going to just submit this. And this just has a bunch of random information that is not even accurate with the question. So let's go ahead. Actually, let's for these, let's copy this and put it in here. This will make it easier on the flip side in Zapier. So let's schedule that event. And now it's going to take me. So this is the site where you can book a call. The calendar is embedded. But now we can go into Zapier. And I am going to go log back in on my account and show you what that looks like after you've connected Calendly. All right, so once you've connected Calendly, what I would come in here and do is, and to connect Calendly, I'd come over here, my apps, and then connect Calendly and connect Airtable or connect any CRM that you want to. Uh, and then I would come up here to the top left and hit create zap. And so essentially in any zap here, we're gonna have a trigger and an action. So the trigger for us is gonna be a new invitee is created in Calendly. And the action is going to be to just simply create a record or we can do find or create a record in our Airtable base. So in Air, uh, in Calendly, that's our trigger. We are going to say invitee created. And we're going to choose, this is where you would have, if you haven't already connected your Calendly event, your Calendly account, you would connect it here. And one thing that's unique about Calendly is Calendly will trigger on any event type all in the same zap. So you can see here, we have our, the right slug because that was the event that we scheduled, but this will send any event through. So the reason why I'm showing you this is right here, if any of these events are booked, it's gonna trigger this. So I don't need, there's no way to change that in the invites you created in Calendly, but if you do end up adding a filter right here, you can filter so it's only the sales calls, for example. So if you say event type name, contains audit call because that's the only call of mine that contains audit call then let it continue so if it doesn't say audit call it's not gonna run the zap all right so the next thing that we want to do is add a record in our Airtable base so let's go into Airtable and I'm gonna open it up on the screen and you're gonna be able to see some stuff that's created in my Airtable base so Let's go open up a new one and I'm going to add a new base. So here we have a new base and I'm just gonna add a few different fields. So this first one is gonna be an email. The second one is going to be biz name. This one will be a single line text. Another one will be full name. And then another one, actually, we just took care of it, but it will be status. So for me, typically when people come in, they're in like a pre-consultation phase. Then I might be waiting for info from them. So it's awaiting additional info and then they need follow-up. So pretty much post that consultation 
I'm either waiting for info from them. They, I need to follow up with them. So basically that's like whose court is the ball in. And then it's either closed, won, closed, lost. So those are some pretty simple statuses. And then another field that we might want from the Calendly, if we come in here and just look at our fields, you would essentially want to add a new field for each one of these. So we would add uh, website for us is gonna be business name, describe your business. So I would come in here and copy these if you're doing this in Airtable and just add them as new fields. So I'm just gonna copy this again, come back into Airtable and hit this plus single line text. I could do either single line or text or multi line text, which is called a long text field. So I could change this. Uh, if you just double click on this, it opens this up and then you can change it to a long text field. Double click on this and we'll also change it to a long text field. So now what I wanna do is primarily in Zapier. So in Zapier, we have our invitee created and then our filter. And so now to map these fields into Airtable, you would wanna have your Airtable connected, but then we can say, our Airtable is called Untitled Base. So this is gonna, we're gonna rename this uh, A1, A, 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 so it shows up at the top, hopefully. So we're gonna go, typically for this situation, I would want to find or create a record because if someone's already booked a call or they're already somehow in our CRM, we would not want to over or create a duplicate. So let's go connect this with a find record and then you'll see at the end we can optionally create a record if they do not exist. So to find find the base we'll connect our base A A A A A. The table will be tabled one. And the search by field will be for us it's gonna be email. And so this these are just fields that I'm picking out of Airtable. So I want to say make sure that there's no email in here twice essentially because that's something that i see as a unique identifier for a person or for a contact in this table it really should be contacts if i'm labeling this correctly so if i just click back on this it's going to relabel it as contacts so we have email search value is going to be the email of the invitee and then we'll toggle this on and now this is where we can map in those fields. So one important thing to note here is I'm gonna explain the rest of this in a second, but we want to, in here, we want to map all the fields, but this is not exactly like the best way to do it. So business name should be website. So that is actually the, what I entered as the, the business name. The full name will be Benjamin Green. Status, this is gonna be where we're typing in pre-consultation. briefly describe your business. So this is where it gets tricky with mapping in the fields. So if you come in here and you want to say, describe, you can see question two response is briefly describe your business. And that's why I copied and pasted those. That would be super easy to put in here. But you'll notice what Calendly gives us is question two, question responses to question, which is the question briefly describe your business. Then question and responses to response is the answer that I gave. So that is a hint as to what I'm gonna be going through at the end of this video, but I would always be pulling the responses in here to Airtable. So our next describe is can you briefly describe the system? Can you briefly describe the system you're hoping to build? And we have the response, so that's perfect. We're not bringing in the question, just the response. So now, let's go test that out. And that founder created a new one. And now, let's say we already have Ben in here, so let's delete these, delete the business name, and Ben is in awaiting additional info then Ben books another call. So we don't have to retest the trigger or the filter, but let's just see what happens if we retest this action and Ben's already in here. So Ben's already in here, and so it's not gonna create a new one. 
but we would probably want it to overwrite most of the info in here. Like you would want to update business name, but would update these two. So in order to do that, what we would do is we would close this out, this zap right here, and we would add another action right under it. And we would say Airtable and then an update record. So now what's unique about this is like the first time it couldn't find anyone with Bena Optimize IS. So zap data was found was true. For example, if I go back into Airtable, right click on this and delete it, there's no Bena Optimize IS anymore. So if I retest this, it's going to say zap data was found as false because there's no Bena Optimize IS. Now you can see there is. And so let's retest this. Zap data was found was true, meaning there was a Bena Optimize IS found in the in our Airtable. So sometimes I'll add a filter there to say only continue if Zap data was found for the overrides. But I usually just continue right into the update record and update it either way. So in here, we will update with Optimize IS Airtable. The base will be the A. The table will be contacts. The record. This is where it gets tricky. So here we want to update the record that we just found or created. So for record, we're going to hit custom. And then we're going to be updating this record right here. And now we would just map in the fields the same way. So we wouldn't need to update email because it found a matching email. But we would want to update business name with the business name. Update full name with the full name. And for these, I'm just clicking in here and it pulls up anything from the prior steps. So for briefly describe your business, I would just open up this and search briefly describe your business. All right, so at the beginning of this video, I op I mentioned that there's one very important thing that I wanted to bring up. And one of the most important tricks that I've learned is in Calendly, in your event, if you happen to move around these questions right here, then it's going to move them around in Zapier as well. So what Calendly sees as each of these questions is it sees the questions as just the place in which the questions are on there. So for example, if I were to move this to the second place right here, then in Zapier, it's also going to reverse that. So while the question asks for the same thing and maybe I put in the same exact answer, it's actually two very different things. So I would just get very careful about how you are rearranging these after you set up the Zap or just know if you do want to rearrange these, you do need to remap your fields. Uh, so just retest it and remap your fields just like we're doing here. So here we will do briefly, briefly describe your business, the response. So as you can see, you have question and response. So briefly describe your business. This is the response. So that's what we would map into the field. System, we would also want the response here as well. And normally I would bring in all of the responses into each field, but for this we only did these, really just these two custom fields. Uh, or I guess three because business name. And I actually brought in the wrong business name here. I should have brought in the one that we are overriding with from Calendly. So make sure to bring in the response from that question one. So we override. So now the only thing left to do is turn this on and start using this. Uh, I would pref much prefer to build out a much more robust CRM than just one table with contacts. And I would also look at making this more of a unique identifier here in the first field that brings together potentially like the full name and the business name uh, or the full name and the email if it's a contacts table. So I hope you gain value out of this video. If you are curious in, about learning more as far as connecting Zapier, Calendly, and Airtable, I go into a full video on how to connect it with adding an opportunity, a company, and a contact in this video right here in the end screen. So if you're curious about building this out more for a more robust CRM and you want to look into that, just go click the video right here in the end screen and you can watch a longer in-depth video on how to connect all of these things uh, for a more robust CRM. So I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in that one. So just go click the end screen right there and I'll see you there.